If you're planning to install a motor gadget M unit on your motorcycle for the first time, it can be a good idea to bench test it first to understand how everything goes together and how everything works. I've just done that because it's also my first time and I hit a little road bump. So I quickly want to show you how it's done properly. Wiring the M unit seems super straightforward and it is, but when I first hooked everything up, nothing worked. And I was like, what is going on here? The only thing that I forgot was the ignition wires. If you don't have that running from the positive terminal to the lock input, then nothing happens. And you don't need to hook up everything on the bench and see how it works because the concept is pretty much the same for all of the lights and stuff like that. So we're gonna do this in three steps. The first one is to just power up the M unit and give power to lights that are always on, like the license plate light, for example. In the next step, we're gonna add the indicator because this is a push button function. So we also are going to add a little button on the input side. And then in the last step, we're gonna add the Mo button, which I'm also gonna install on the BMW so we can see if and how that works. So let me quickly walk you through what you need for this setup and then we start connecting everything. We need the battery for our power supply, the M unit obviously, if you have the MO button, but that's just optional. And then for the fundamental connections, we need a inline 30 amp fuse and I have used 2.5 square millimeter wire. We also need a ground wire from the M unit to the battery. So that is also a 2.5 square millimeter wire that goes here. To start the M unit, we need to mimic the ignition lock. So we have another wire that goes from the positive terminal to the lock input side. And I've used 2.5 square millimeters as well with a little ring terminal on the side. Next up, we have the two lights. So I'm using the license plate light. You can use a brake light, whatever you have. And then the three in one indicators that I'm gonna run on the BMW. And I'm just gonna hook up the indicator for this little test. And then on the input side, you need either just one wire that you can touch to ground. And that is basically the same like pushing this button, but I have unscrewed one of the buttons from the Mo switch because I wanted to test that as well. And then lastly, we need a few crocodile clamps just to make temporary connections. The first step that we're gonna do is to prepare the battery terminals, but we're not gonna hook anything up to the battery until we're completely done and sure that that is safe to do. But just in preparation, we're gonna use the M5 screw and connect the ground wire to the ground terminal on the M unit. And then we're gonna connect the wire that goes to the positive terminal on the battery and the wire that goes to the lock to the battery terminal on the M unit. Now it's time to hook up the first basic light. For that, we connect the ground wire with a crocodile clamp to the ground terminal of the M unit. And then we plug the other wire into the AUX2 outlet of the M unit. Now we're ready for the first test and we can basically hook up the wires to the battery. But I just wanted to say with a setup like this, where you have a lot of crocodile clamps and like open-ended wires, you have to be careful that you don't create a short. So just make sure that none of the wires that aren't supposed to touch are touching. So with that out of the way, Let's first connect the positive side to the battery and now the negative one. When you do that, all of the lights of the M unit are going to flash for a little while and then turn back off. So now the M unit has power and we can mimic the ignition lock by plugging in the wire that comes from the battery terminal of the M unit into the lock input terminal. The lights flash all around and we have constant power to the license plate light. That is the first test done. Let's move on and add the indicator and the little switch. To be on the safe side, let's quickly take this wire back out and also disconnect the battery cables, the ground wire first, and then the positive wire just to be safe. So now we're gonna add the indicator. This is a three in one indicator. So we have four wires on the opposite side. We only need the blue wire, which is the positive side and the black wire, which is ground. So for those two, I'm using a red crocodile clamp to connect to the blue wire and then another crocodile clamp to connect to the black wire. The black one goes to the common ground on the M unit. And then for the red one, I have just taken off the crocodile clamp and stripped the insulation a little bit. So this one goes into output turn left. So now what we still need is the input signal. And you could just use one of those wires, put this into the input side, turn left, and then touch it to one of the ground terminals. And that would mimic the switch. But we're using the switch itself. And all I've done is I've inserted two little wires into these terminals. One wire goes to the input side, turn left and then for the other side we're going to steer this crocodile clamp from the light put that one also onto the one from the indicator and then we're going to connect 
this trocodile clamp to the button side. So that is test setup number two. What we need to do now is again connect the battery, positive terminal first, the ground connection next. And lastly, again, we mimic the ignition lock by plugging this wire in. There we go. The light's working. And now we can use this little switch to activate the indicator. Well, as you can see, it's not working. But with this example, I quickly want to show you how easy the M unit makes it for you to understand what's going on. If we look closely, we can see that when I press the button, the light on the input terminal lights up once. So that tells us that the M unit got the signal. Now what should happen is that the M unit transmits that signal from the input side to the output side. And that's exactly what happens. We can see that by the flashing light on the output side. But why is the indicator not working? Can you see where the problem is? The wire is not in the activated terminal, but one above. So I quickly need to switch this one to the right terminal. Turn left, not turn right. There we go, nice. And it's gonna flash until we push the switch again. And now we're gonna add the MO button. All we need from the MO button are three wires. We need the yellow signal for turn left. And then the green one is the one that transmits all the signals to the M unit. And we need a ground for the MO button as well. So these three wires. The rest is unnecessary at this stage. So now we're not gonna connect the switch directly to the input side of the M unit, but the signal from the switch runs through the MO button and then the MO button transmits it to the M unit. So we can take out the wire on the input side of the M unit and also detach it from the switch. So now instead of that wire, we are going to use the yellow wire from the MO button in the same terminal. The green wire from the MO button goes to the kill input and that transmits all of the signals through just one wire to the M unit. So now the last thing that we need is ground for the MO button and I'm just gonna add that to the switch ground. So these two get connected and run back to the M unit. By now you already know the drill, let's connect the battery. So now let's see if that works. Nice. Perfect. Now that all of that works, I think we can add one more layer to it and add the ignition lock. The one that I use has three terminals, so I quickly need to figure out which one is ground and which the other two are. And by the way, if you like any of the parts that I use on the BMW build and you want to use them for your own project, then check out the build sheet. It's the first link down below in the description, and it's a list of all of the parts that I've used with their names, shops, prices, links, and all of the notes. And in addition to that, you get a ton of alternatives to those parts that I've considered when first researching parts for this build. You get a ton of value, a ton of information, and it will save you a lot of time. And in addition to that, it supports the channel. But now let's add this to the mix. To check which terminal is which, we're going to use the voltmeter. Turn that on. And that is set to the continuity setting. You just have to make sure that you've plugged those into the right terminals the black one goes into that one and then for the other one you can see the same symbol as it is here and then whenever you have continuity so a good connection it's gonna beep the lock is in the off position at the moment so there shouldn't be any connection between any of the three terminals okay so that is off so now if we turn the key one position we should have connection between two but not all three so these two are connected in position one. And if we turn it to the second position, we have connection between these two, these two, and also these two. This one is ground. These two will be the positive terminals. Took out the ignition lock. I've quickly made two new wires. Those are 1.5 square millimeters thick. We switch out this wire that went into the input side lock with the red wire from the ignition lock. Now, this goes into the lock side. Now we should turn the M unit on once we switch the key. Perfect. Last check with the switch. Indicator works as well. All right, we turn this back off. Everything's off. I hope this little guide helps you to understand and test your own system. Let me know how it's going. And if you want to see how I install all of the parts on the BMW, then hit the follow button. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.